color situation. Um, looking at it now, uh, the, the major problem that I had with it was that um, it, it still, I felt like I needed more work with the values. So this next layer um, is basically a darkening layer. You can see that's pretty dramatic right there. I darkened up every single color in the picture. Um, here we can turn off the other layers and take a look at it. This is what this did. And basically everything except for the eyes on the bad guy, which I wanted to sort of have a glow, um, and the Powerpuff Girls, uh, which I wanted, I wanted them, again, I wanted them to sort of pop out a little from the background. I was worried about them getting kind of lost in the background a little bit. Um, so I made them lighter, like they're catching a little bit of direct light somehow, so they're a little bit lighter. And the windows, uh, I wanted the windows on the building to kind of glow like lights were coming out. So, so I left those light and everything else got a little bit darker. So when we put it all together, you know, this is, this is what we get. You know, um, now uh, the way I work with this coloring method is uh, I start with the darks first and then I do the lights on top of that. So here we have all the dark values. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with some highlight colors. And I'm going to sort of lighten, lighten up the light parts. Now here's the first set of highlights. And you can see a couple of things that have happened. First of all, the sky is probably the most obvious. I gave it this sort of red kind of sunsetty glow. I just did that with a I did that with a gradient tool, so I get my, my gradient tool and I choose this sort of light uh, orangey yellow and uh, I just made a gradient coming up in the sky section, you know, uh, I use my selection tool to, to select the sky area and then I make a big, uh, a big gradient there. Using that same color, uh, I go around on the girls and, and I put in some highlights, so there's some, there's some highlights here, you can see, here let's zoom in and, and see some of these these highlights here I'll turn them off you can see how those highlights are coming in and sort of making those those girls pop a little bit did not put any highlights on the building um, again because what I'm trying to do here is, is make the sort of girls catch the light and pop out a little bit um, all right so when I'm happy with that layer uh, this is the next layer I threw on. Here we have some highlights on the building, but they're different. Okay, what I've done with the building is something common with sort of night scenes in cities is that a lot of the lights are concentrated on street level. And so what I did is I chose a different color. This is kind of a yellowy green. Um, and I did gradients on the sides of the buildings coming up from below. So, so the effect that we have is light kind of shining up from the street level, a different source of light. Um, it, it's not getting up and reaching the girls or the bad guy. Actually, I think it does reach the bad guy eventually, but, um, but it's just kind of coming up the buildings, and so it gives another dimension to the buildings there. Um, my next layer here, um, yep, I used that same color, and I highlighted just the bottom of, of him. I just wanted him to stand out a little bit. You can see without that, he still is reading very flat. You know, his eyes have this little sort of gradient effect, but otherwise he's reading very flat. Um, so I wanted him to catch some of that light. So just on the bottoms of things, it's kind of spooky up lighting, which works well for villains. So he's just catching a little bit. I think I just went in with an airbrush tool and just kind of brushed on this color on a separate layer. So, and now we're up into, uh, these are our line colors. Um, yep, see there's my lines. Um, one more thing I wanted to do to make the girls stand out is uh, I'm going to go in, I'm going to use color holds on the buildings. Okay, This is what that looks like. Uh, it's very subtle. Let me go in and, and see if you can see this or not. Okay, If you take a look at this line here, it's not black anymore. It's this kind of dull red, and that's right in this layer. Okay, See, there it is, black. Now I turn this layer on. That's a color hold. So the girls are still black, so that gives them a little pop, but the buildings I've kind of made them a little less important by uh, covering all their lines with this dark red. Okay, Now you can see we've got a little more sort of pop to the girls. They're sort of standing out in the picture more. Um, let's go up a little bit. Uh, I was sort of, this is a point where I was getting to where I thought, yes, this is pretty close to finished. I took a look at the picture and said, um, 
you know, I still, I still felt like I wanted those girls to stand out a little more. I like the, I like the light situation. I like the colors, um, but I, they need to, they need to come out a little bit more. You know, this is a picture is about them. You know, the background is sort of interesting, but it, they, they need to pop out a little bit more. And so I, I sort of use a rather obvious device. This is, um, these are just color trails. You see these sometimes when they fly really fast, they leave these trails of color. Um, so the way I did this, this is just a, um, this is just a, uh, a transparency. So I make a solid blue color, the blue of bubbles, and I do it as a halo around her and then sort of streaming off. Uh, and then I just change the opacity to about 50%. So you can still see the buildings through. So it's like this, this color coming on top. Um, I also did a white halo right around their body just to give them a little bit of extra pop and kind of a glowing feel. It sort of the bubbles kind of looks like Obi-Wan Kenobi here after he died. So, um, And that was very simple. I just outlined the figure in white with my selection tool. Um, and then I used a blur filter. Uh, filter, uh, blur, I used a Gaussian blur for this. Or Gaussian blur. I never say that right. Um, and you can see, well here you can see what the, the blur filter does. It's it's blurring this more and more. Um, and, and just doing that on the white just gave that a little bit of softer look instead of a hard white line around her. So it gives her a little bit of a glow. And then I collapse the two layers together and there's Bubbles Energy Trail. Same thing for uh, Buttercup and for Blossom. So now when we come back we can see just a little bit more makes them pop out just just sort of the right amount or the right amount that I wanted for this piece um, and so then of course the final step is my through signature up in the corner Masterman 2009 uh, if you've looked at any of my stuff before you know that uh, the signature I use for these kinds of pieces sometimes is a tribute to Harvey Kurtzman who used to do his signature the same way so luckily I have a last name that lends itself to to uh, making this reference to Harvey Kurtzman. So this is the finished piece here, uh, exactly as it as it appears on my Deviant site. Um, you know, all I have to do now is is flatten the picture, um, probably take the size down. I usually work at about uh, 300 DPI. You can see the resolution here is 300. Take it down to 72. Um, which is what we use when we're on the internet. You know, your computer screen will display stuff at 72, so if you're putting something on the web, there's no reason to go any higher than 72. Uh, it's just wasted file space. So um, I flatten it and put it up on the website. So uh, that is the process in a nutshell. Went through that. Uh, geez, that took 25 minutes. I guess I didn't go through that quick. But uh, that is the process that I use uh, for coloring. Um, in general, you know, this is a very sort of cartoony, blocky piece. A lot of my other work is is a lot more sort of naturalistic, and so um, I use a lot more blends uh, and gradients, and and sort of um, there's a lot more subtlety to the shading and stuff like that. Um, but it's the same basic process. You can use it for a variety of different types of color styles, and and I really like it. It works well with the way I I think about color and and the way I think about modeling. So. So um, if you are interested in taking a look, uh, I'm going to put this, um, this Photoshop file uh, up on DeviantArt. Um, by the time this video is live, uh, you can go to my Deviant site. Um, I'll put the address up at the end of this video or, or somewhere. It'll be available so you can see. And you can go and you can download this file. So if you have Photoshop, you can take a look at all these different layers uh, and sort of get a close look. and and just give you an idea of how I did this. Um, obviously this is just the way one guy does it. It doesn't, it's not necessarily the right way uh, because there isn't a right way, but um, for anyone who's interested, this is, this is my process uh, as of right now and uh, I hope you find it interesting. So anyway, thanks for watching and hopefully I will have uh, some more tutorials to show you sometime soon.